Hey guys, welcome to episode 67 of the D-Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. I'm being joined today by my uh, super furry co-host, Marjorie, who's laying on the floor, floor right behind me, not on her dog bed, which is located over there. She is instead on the floor in front of her dog bed. But whatever. <laughs> so uh, today is Saturday, October 26th of 2019. And it's been way too long uh, since I last recorded an episode. So the craft room is almost fully put together. Like it's starting to look like a craft room again. Uh, but I still have some things to take care of over here. So, uh, it's not fully, uh, assembled yet. I also have, um, a table over here, which I usually use for cutting fabric on, and it is covered in random things that need to find a place. So, um, I have this corner to tackle right up here next to the camera, uh, and I have this, this, few boxes over here to handle um, and then it should be pretty good to go. Um, I have not spent a lot of time in my craft room partially because it has been so messy so it'll be nice to have this room functional. <laughs> so those of you who might just be joining me for the first time, uh, let me say welcome. This is my podcast about uh, knitting, crocheting, sewing, uh, all kinds of crafty things. And I uh, recently moved across the country to the Pacific Northwest of the United States. I was previously living in Texas, and so we're still setting up house. We've only been here a couple of months, and I certainly work a full-time job, and so I'm away from the house a lot. So um, I teach college math at a community college that is about an hour away from where I live. So I have two hours of driving every day, plus actual teaching time, plus office hours, plus meetings. Um, so it does rack up to anywhere between six hours that I'm away from the house. No. No, more than six hours, because I'm at work more than four hours. Yeah. I'm at least at work five and a half hours, at the very least. So let's say six. Then I'm away from the house eight hours, uh, and that's on a short day. So if it's a longer day, like tomorrow will be... I will be at the office from 6 a.m. until 4.30 p.m., which is, what, 10 and a half hours? So 12 and a half hours I will be away from the house. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, so they're just um, longer hours because of the commute. Uh, and my first class of the day is at 7.30 in the morning, and sometimes I have to stay until 4.30 in the afternoon uh, for meetings. So some days can be long. Yeah, long. So anyway, that is that. Um, still somewhere in there, I managed to get a bunch of crafting done. So <laughs> that's what this podcast is about. <laughs> announcements. You guys, I have an announcement to make, a really big announcement um, that I've been wanting to tell you guys and I haven't been able to because I was sick with laryngitis and couldn't talk. Yeah, so on the previous episode I was getting kind of scratchy and I was like, oh my voice is not all there. Yeah, it turned into acute laryngitis. I couldn't talk for a few days. Um, whatever. <laughs> of course, those couple days of no talking fell on the weekend that I was going to record a podcast. 
Anyway, I am feeling fine now. I'm totally well. So let me make my announcement, which I have been talking about on Instagram. Um, you can follow my business, D Hard House, on Instagram at D Hard House, where I post um, about patterns that I'm designing, um, yarn that I'm dyeing, bags that I'm making. And those types of things. Uh, you can follow me, Alicia the Person, at Read Knit Run on Instagram to see pictures of um, walks that I take with Marjorie and uh, things that I'm knitting uh, in my personal life that isn't necessarily something that I'm designing um, and things like that. Also, we have a group on Ravelry called the D Hard House Podcast Group, where you can find uh, notes and links of everything that I talk about in these episodes, as well as threads where we will be hosting knit-alongs. I say we, it's just me. I'm the only one uh, running this shindig. Anyway, um, so also in the D Hard House Podcast Group on Ravelry, you can join in uh, with knit-alongs and craft alongs and commenting to win prizes and whatnot. So did that cover all of those logistics? I believe so. Okay. So I've been talking about it on Instagram because it's taken me a while to get here to YouTube, but here I am. So enough with the suspense. Let me tell you, uh, I am releasing a hat collection of patterns November 1st. Uh, and this hat collection is called the Give Thanks Hat Collection. Um, and I'd like to make this an annual tradition. So I'm calling it the Give Thanks Give Thanks Hat Collection 2019 in hopes that I'll have one in 2020 and 2021 and so forth. Uh, but time will tell. <laughs> so anyway, so it is a collection of four hat patterns and the patterns will be re released in a club like fashion. So, um, they will be released once a week throughout the month of November. So November 1st, um, when you buy the collection, the first pattern will be in there ready to go. And then seven days later, I will add the second pattern. Seven days after that, I will add the third pattern. And seven days after that, I will add the fourth pattern. We will also have a knit along to go with this hat collection. First, let me tell you that <laughs> Uh, the hat knitting bug bit me really hard and I wanted to knit a bunch of hats for gifts and so I was coming with, up with different patterns and I thought, oh yes, this would be a great way to release a collection is a bunch of hat patterns that are, that are similar but different um, and so one person could easily knit all of these. Uh, and then I also wanted to incorporate uh, a charity element. So the hat collection, um, I'm realizing I may have priced it too low. But because I've already said I'm going to sell it for that price, I'm not going to change it. So the collection itself is only $5 for four hat patterns. Uh, they will be very simple hat patterns, so I did not feel like I wanted to charge too much. But at the same time, I do want to use this to raise money for charity. Um, and also, it does take time uh, to put together these patterns, write them up, edit them, make sure everything is correct uh, before posting them. So, hey, you're getting a good deal. So it's $5 for the collection and anyone who purchases this collection during November of this year, $1 from each of those purchases will be donated to charity. So 20% of the proceeds. So uh, the chari charity that I have picked after much deliberation, because it's hard to find a good charity, um, I like to donate to food banks uh, this time of year. Uh, it's getting colder and, you know, 
Thanksgiving in the U.S. is coming up, and uh, this is a time when um, food banks generally get a lot of their donations. So um, I wanted to encourage that and, and also be able to give some money where they can uh, use that later in the year when um, they are scraping by for uh, food to supply. So I chose the charity Feeding America. Uh, I really wanted to go with something local here in the Pacific Northwest, but I had a really hard time finding one that was nonprofit. And I really want a nonprofit charity to donate to, meaning that um, the money that they raise goes to the cause, like majority of it goes to the cause and more than a majority, like close to 100%. Um, and I looked up uh, information about Feeding America and it looks like that is the case. They are a nonprofit organization um, and they do try to get um, food donations from people as well as monetary donations uh, so they can purchase food. They also take uh, collections from stores and restaurants where uh, the food is uh, past its past its shelf life but not past its shelf life like, how do I put this? There's a, when you buy food in the store, you, you'll either see something called a sell by date or a use by date. Um, and those are actually kind of different. <laughs> so uh, in all honesty, I used to work at Walmart when I was a college student. I worked at Walmart for a brief time and I worked in the deli in Walmart. And the deli department is in charge of putting out things like um, the some of the frozen pizzas, the subs and salads, and things like that. So as the subs and salads and pizzas um, were getting close to their sell-by date um, and they weren't sold, uh, we would take them in the back and put them in um, the fridge or the freezer. And there was a bin in there designated for Feeding America. And so when the delivery trucks would come deliver things, they would also pick up this box uh, to take back to deliver to Feeding America. So these things are not spoiled. They're not expired. They are still safe to eat. Um, but they're not going in the trash. They're going to feed someone who could really use it. And, and I really like that. So um, this is something that uh, I've become more aware of in learning about uh, climate justice at work and things like that, where um, having a lot of waste adds to the problem of hunger and having hungry people contributes to, you know, social problems of, of crime because people are getting really desperate to eat food or die, um, and how a lot of these um, issues kind of feed into each other. And so I think it's really cool that um, this charity not only is focusing on distributing food to hungry people, but they're looking at alternative ways to get that food that also helps um, address other issues like a lot of waste. So food that would normally have been thrown away can now go to feed someone who needs it. So, <laughs> all of that about uh, Feeding America. So $1 from each sale will go to Feeding America and in looking on their website, uh, $1 is equivalent to 10 meals. So if you purchase this hat collection, you will be helping to provide someone with 10 meals uh, when they would have a really hard time finding those 10 meals. So <laughs> that's a part of this. The next part of this is the knit along. So uh, like I said, I'll be releasing the patterns one pattern a week uh, during the month of November. You do not have to speed knit these hats and knit every single one in a week and post about it, okay? The knit along is going to run from November 1st because that's when the patterns become available. Excuse me. 
The knit along will run from November 1st, because that's when the patterns become available, until the end of the year. So you'll get the entire month of November as well as December. Now, <laughs> why do I choose to host knit alongs in the busy knitting Christmas holiday season? I don't know because everyone's knitting and I want to as well and I want to feel included and I want other people to feel included and here we go so okay yes I realize it is the holiday season uh some of you have probably already picked out patterns that you're going to knit for people <sighs> So do not feel pressured to get involved if your knitting time is already strapped and booked for other things. Uh, but hats are a really good gift. So uh, uh, this is not a mystery knit along. Um, it's not a club. So I wouldn't consider any of the patterns a secret. Like I said, I have been posting about them on Instagram on the D Hard House account. So I'm just going to go ahead and share with you the first pattern that is coming up in a week on November 1st. And that is this super simple hat pattern. So I really wanted this first collection to be super beginner friendly. If you've never knit a hat before, you'll be fine. Uh, and the very first hat in the collection is super simple. And of course, uh, the yarn that I knitted in had a knot right here and it always keeps creeping back to the surface. That side looks better. <laughs> okay, so uh, here it is flat. Um, it is very long and it is all one by one ribbing. So this is a beanie style hat and it's meant to have the um, brim of the hat roll up. So it is, oh, it is just so comfortable. And of course it looks so dark on the camera. Can I fix my lighting so it doesn't look so dark? Sure, I can shine the light right at my face. Well, this uh, yarn is, of course, a beautiful navy blue, uh, which is super flattering on myself. But uh, I knit this for my husband, for Michael, and uh, he looks really good in navy blue, as most men do. So uh, it is one by one ribbing, like I said. I don't know how well you can see this. She's going to lay in her bed. Yay. We just bought that the other day because we went to go visit um, my mother-in-law and we left Marjorie's bed there on accident. Yeah, and I felt really bad. So we went and bought her another one. Uh, we will get that bed back when we go visit next time. But um, yeah, I felt really bad. <laughs> so now she'll have, she'll have two beds and it'll be fine. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's just one by one ribbing and because this um, folded up brim is not attached in any way, um, it means this hat is super, um, uh, I was going to say customizable, but that is not the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Um, like I knit this for Michael, but I can wear it. So different people, um, you don't have to plan for that person's head. There we go. Okay. So different people can wear this hat and it will be fine. Okay. So I am struggling with how to say that in a condensed way, but there it is. So <laughs> whatever. Um, and then, you know, if you really like um, wearing it without folding up the brim, you know, this, this kind of look, then like, you know, you, you can go for it and whatever and whatever. You know, some people do do hat things. So um, anyway, Okay, loud vehicle. Um, but yes, 
it's so you knit a flat and then when you put it on you fold up the the brim and there you go so if you are wanting to attach this um you know fold it up and sew it so that it stays then you could totally do that i did not write that into the pattern um but it is just a super simple nice um beanie hat and stretchy so it it forms to whoever's head it is on and um you know just pick a really nice flattering color and and there you go so um yeah i'm really excited about that and then uh the second hat i am going to show you because um i'm pretty sure my sister doesn't watch the podcast <laughs> Um, although I would love to have her on the podcast one day. Sorry for my hair, but I'm going to put on another hat, so I'll fix it later. Um, my sister's birthday was this past week, and of course, last minute, I get this idea of knitting her a hat, and so I need to get this in the mail today. Uh, so I did finish it, and I made it out of this um, sparkly yarn, which is super fun, actually. I didn't think I would like uh, the sparkly yarn, but I think I do. So this is, let me just fold that back down again, uh, almost the same hat, okay? But, um, I mean, obviously I use different yarn. But what I wanted to do in this collection is just play on this basic shape and just make small tweaks to it to get um, different designs. So um, on this one, I did the decreases the same way, but in the pattern, I use slightly different decreases. Uh, and then I also added this cabling detail. So it's still, you know, a ribbed hat so it's still going to fit very snugly on your head yeah this the, with the folded brim so again depending on how um you want to wear this hat that's very customizable but then when you stretch out the ribbing you can see uh this cabling detail so See if I can get any closer for you guys. But yeah, I just think that is so fun. So that's going to be um, the second hat. And then the third hat, um, I'm still uh, knitting the final design for. Um, I had a very different idea for the third hat. No, the third hat um, I knit for my mother-in-law. We went, we went to go visit her. I gave it to her, so I have to re-knit that. <laughs> it's the fourth one I'm working on right now that I had a different idea for, but as designing goes, uh, it looked horrible, so I ripped it out and had to go with a, a different plan, but... Anyway, yeah, so uh, like I said, they're, they're, they're quick knits. I mean, I knit this in two days. Uh, I knit this in a week because work. Uh, but I spent the week knitting this hat and then the weekend knitting this hat. Um, so they're really quick. They are all worsted weight yarn. And I used US size 6 needles. Uh, but you want to use a needle size that will get you the gauge. So uh, the gauge is measured in the in the ribbing unstretched. So right now as it's sitting, it's unstretched and you know when you put it on, that is stretched. Just so you know. <laughs> I'm gonna fix my hair. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, all those details, uh, well, they are up on Ravelry, but I don't know that I've made the collection visible yet because um, I want to release it November 1st. Yeah. 
Okay, so that is that announcement, you guys. Pattern release, Give Thanks Hat Collection 2019. Um, I am hosting a knit along on Ravelry to go with that. Again, it'll be the two months of November and December. Uh, that way you can knit um, lots of hats if you want to, or just fit it in somewhere in your gift knitting that you might be doing um, this time of year. So, um, yeah, so my personal knitting, um, yep, I've made uh, a bunch of hats. I also have um, this design I knit for myself, um, but I think I left it in the car, so that's a third hat. And then the one I gave to my mother-in-law is a fourth hat. So I have knit um, four hats, and I have... A fifth one on the needles right now um, and I finished one of the two one of the three sweaters that I had on the needles yeah so I finished a sweater <laughs> and I got up to put it on so Marjorie's like what's going on hey girl so this is the, this pattern is called Radiate and it's by Hohi Locatelli. This is a paid for pattern available on Ravelry and it was a delight to knit. It is a DK weight sweater pattern uh, knit from the top down and you use two colors uh, in her pictures for the pattern. She has a gorgeous uh, bright pink on the top here and then a very pale, it looks like a pale gray uh, to go with it. So it's it's just a sweater that seems really nice for that pop color in your wardrobe. So that's what I went with except instead of pink I went orange uh, and then I also paired it with a pale gray so I'm going to stand up awkwardly so you can see the full sweater oh yes and there's Marjorie <laughs> okay so uh, first of all yes I'm wearing sweatpants it's Saturday I am going to wear sweatpants because they're comfortable um, but I just love this sweater you guys okay so the um yeah awkward okay so the pop color is only used up here on the top in the uh yoke section and um when you separate for the sleeves you no longer use two colors so that's um, a really nice thing. Uh, and then it's just um, the solid color here down with some ribbing at the bottom. So it's super easy. This um, color work here, super easy in the pattern. Um, very well written. So this type of yoke for this sweater is, I believe, a is it called a circle yoke because it's not a raglan okay there's no um raglan increases here um what you do is you knit so many rounds with a fixed number of stitches and then you have like a big increase round and then you knit out a bit with those stitches and then another big increase round um <clears throat> etc p.s my nail polish matches my sweater. Um, I really wanted to wear this sweater at work. <laughs> and when I was picking out my nail polish color, I was just thinking of this sweater. So <laughs> it's October and whatever, I'm feeling festive. So anyway, um, so it was neat to try. I've never knit um, a sweater yoke like that. And I was worried that it would fit weird but it does not fit weird in fact it fits very nicely so um I'm a fan I really like it <sighs> anyway
and even though so I'm on the second floor we have a house that has a second floor uh, our previous house did not and um, it was warm up here earlier so I opened the window but um, I think I might keep this on now it's still kind of warm but anyway it's warm inside if I were outside this would be perfect I'm very pleased with this sweater. I I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so the yarn that I used, um, it's a DK weight sweater. I used yarn from Hobby Lobby called, see why don't I have the tags with me? Okay, so the orange, <laughs> so it's Baby Bee Yarn, Sweet Delights. The orange color is called Carrots. Oh, no. Obviously, this is like yarn for kids, not adults. Uh, but it's really hard to find DK weight yarn in the, in the big, big box craft stores that isn't for kids in mind, right? So I was really happy to find an orange color because it's predominantly pink, blue and yellow which is fine but you know there are more colors right so anyway carrots oh no um, and then the gray color is called flannel so no child in this picture so yeah it's um, 60% acrylic, 40% polyamide. Um, just uh, super simple to, to care for. This has been in the washing machine already. Uh, and then I don't like to put it in the dryer, even though I probably could and it wouldn't shrink. I still don't. Uh, I did lay this flat to dry and um, it's fine. Now, because it is, you know, acrylic yarn, it's not like it blocks. So keep in mind that if you're knitting with yarn like that, um, the way it looks when you're done knitting is probably how it will look after it's washed too. And that's something I've figured out. Yeah, it will block out or it won't if it's acrylic yarn. So another sweater that I have on the needle still is the So Faded by Andrea Mowry, and this would be my second time knitting this pattern. So last time I showed this sweater to you, it is a top-down sweater. So here it is upside down. <laughs> um, and I've only knit about an inch on this. Um, because I started knitting all those hats. So yes, the So Faded, um, let's see, what did she use? Did she use like five colors or something in the original, original pattern? Uh, I've knit this before and I did use five colors to fade, uh, but this time I wanted to use two. Because uh, after you knit the faded patterns, you have a lot left over because you're only using so much of this color and so much of that color. Uh, so I just said I would love to just use the whole skein of this and the whole skein of that and just fade it together. So um, that's what I'm doing. So these are both uh, yarns dyed by me. Uh, the color on top is Poolside and the color on bottom is Winter Solstice which is quite uh, a funny combination because one is summer and one is winter, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, you could be poolside on the winter solstice if you were not living in the Pacific Northwest of America. So I guess that's not completely out of the realm of possibilities, is it? So uh, yeah, I'm, now that I get it out of the, the project bad, it makes me want to work on it again, so yay. But uh, yeah, I'm making good progress. I've got about um, 40, probably a little over 40 grams here left. And of course, my lighting is not the best thing in the world. Uh, I'm still working on things, but I think I'll probably order some, some lights on Amazon um, because... 
it <laughs> I forgot that it's like cloudy here most of the time. So uh, in Texas, I was relying on natural sunlight, which we had a lot of. And here, I cannot rely on that. So I'm probably going to just go ahead and buy some lights on Amazon. Because it's really unfortunate when I show you guys yarn that I've dyed and it looks way different on camera than in person. Yeah, yeah, I have a desk lamp right here and uh, I have it shining at the wall so the light can reflect back off the white wall. Uh, but even still, it's uh, washing this color out a bit. Uh, so it's a bit more um, green. It's got a little bit more green going on there than what you're seeing. So the third sweater on the needles uh, hasn't been worked on. That's a sweater for my husband. Uh, I have the yarn and everything. I have no excuses except time and how I'm choosing to spend it. And I'm spending it on hats. <laughs> Speaking of my husband, he is downstairs right now building a warping mill for me. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that did not make the move with us was my warping board. Yeah. Uh, a couple of reasons. The um, dowels we put in broke because uh, they were too thin. And it's basically just a frame with dowels in it, which seems pretty easy to make for a guy who, who likes woodworking. Uh, so we left it behind. It, it did not make the move. Uh, but I need to dye up some self-striping yarn, you guys. In fact, I do have in the shop okay now the pictures on Etsy are much more color representative okay of course adjusting for whatever settings you might have on your computer versus my computer uh, but uh, yes so Holly Jolly self striping yarn is up in the shop on Etsy uh, and when you knit this up the stripes go like this mm -hmm. so you have um, a fat green stripe and then it alternates between a thin red and a thin white stripe so they are uh, different size stripes that you get here uh, the mini that I used uh, or the yarn that I used to knit the heel is not one that I dyed uh, this is from dye is cast yarns and what was this color called it's gray with tiny little um, speckles in it pink blue yellow I use it in my meandering shawl, which is a Stephen West pattern. I can't remember the colorway name, but uh, this contrast heel is not is not my yarn, but I wanted to use it uh, with this festive holiday color. So um, yeah, this is ooh, this is up in the shop, uh, and like I said, my husband is putting together a warping mill for me right now as we speak. I'm super excited. He should have it done today so I can start using it um, to dye up some more self-striping yarn. There's Marjorie. Marjorie! <laughs> You're so cute. She's like, let me out of this room already. Okay, how'd we do? Um... I think we're doing pretty darn good. I'm, I'm right on schedule with what I told Michael on how long this would take. So, oh yes, this is what I need to talk about. <sighs> okay, so I need to talk about some spinning because I was scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and I found some wool for sale at a really insanely good rate. So I bought two pounds, two pounds of uh, Coopworth fleece. Yep. Uh, and this is not the full two pounds. <laughs> 
Uh, this is what I have washed so far. So I uh, have never done this before, <laughs> but I wanted to, to try it out. So I'm taking, you know, wool and um, washing it. There's still some grass in here. Um, and combing it and then spinning it. And the goal is to, you know, hopefully make a nice, like, garment out of it or something. So I did uh, wash a small batch first. This is that small batch. And I wanted to take it through the whole process of um, washing it, combing it, and spinning it. And this first batch was still too greasy. It's still, like, I'm... Mm, it's still too greasy. So it's, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's, the colors are cool. The spin was fun. Um, but I would not want to wear this. Yeah, I would not want to wear this. So I just did a, um, a three ply chain ply. I just spun up, um, a quick single because I wanted to see uh, how it would feel. Uh, as I was combing it, I was like, it still feels kind of greasy, but let's see how this does when I'm spinning it because I feel like it being greasy will make drafting harder. So does it actually make it harder? Uh, in my opinion, yes, it does, uh, but it was not like impossible. And then I just took that single and I uh, chain plied it. Uh, just to see how this would go and and yes I did uh wash this yarn after I spun it and it uh still feels super greasy I would not want to wear this so what that tells me is that uh my initial stage of washing was not enough it was not successful so I um the next batch I washed more so I said okay I need to go watch even more instructional videos because I did some research before that initial wash and I said okay I need to go watch some more videos and get more information so I did and it feels so much better it feels oh my gosh like you know this feels like some of the stuff I buy that's already uh, the roving that's already cleaned and and combed and dyed pretty colors and whatnot like it it feels like that it feels clean which is good um so the problem i was having sorry um the problem that i was having was that i did not have the water hot enough so I don't know what the temperature is set at for our water heater. We are renting this this home. Uh, we have not purchased it. Uh, so I don't know what the setting is on the water heater for the max temperature, but I didn't feel like messing with it. Uh, but the max hot water temp out of the faucet was not hot enough to help remove the oil and grease uh, from the wool. So I had to add in some... Uh, uh, boiling water in with the hot water out of the faucet uh, and that seemed to do it so and plus I did uh, instead of two washes I did three washes uh, with an extra rinse as well so uh, it feels way better uh, so I'm going to uh, take a small bit of this batch and spin it up again, chain ply it, uh, just to see how it feels when I'm spinning because, and then washing the yarn again and seeing how it feels because I don't want to go through this whole process and spin up all of my yarn to find out that I hate it and that I would not want to knit with it and that I would not want to wear it. Um, that would be horrible. So, <laughs> So I'm going to take um, a, a small portion of this, this washed 
wool and uh, and do the same thing and, and make sure it's gonna work out. And if it does, then I can wash the rest of the fleece uh, in preparation for that. So that is, is the plan. So I've been doing a lot of this. Um, Oh, the wind is blowing and it's it's knocking more of the leaves down out of the trees. It sounded like it was raining, but it was leaves falling. Uh, anyway, so I've been doing uh, a lot of this and um, yeah, <laughs> I'm very excited about it. This is so uh, cool to learn how yarn is made and to actually do it yourself and the whole process from the sheep to the sweater is really uh it's interesting it's learning about um a little bit of the history of of these processes as well because you know well why did they choose to do it that way and and so uh, i'm having a lot of fun researching uh this whole process and by trying it myself it's it's very rewarding i enjoy it <laughs> Okay, guys, so that is all that I have for episode 67. I hope that you uh, purchase the Give Thanks hat collection of 2019 and that you have a chance to participate in our knit along. There are prizes for the knit along, um, and I've posted that information in the Ravelry thread the thread in our group on Ravelry for the knit along. And uh, so you can find all that information there. So I am going to sign off so I can go check in on my warping mill and I'll see you guys next time.